Hello there. Russia has put forth its demands and compliance by Ukraine will end the violence, we're told. So President Putin has laid out his terms to stop the war in Ukraine. First, Ukrainians must stop fighting to defend their country. Second, Ukraine must enshrine neutrality into its constitution. Third, Ukraine must accept that Crimea is Russian territory. Fourth, Ukraine must recognise the Donbasin regions of Luhansk and Donetsk as independent states. And then, say the Russians, the war will be over. Now many in the West will say, that is as it should be, so let's get the document signed and get back to normal. Russia will have its buffer and nothing much will have changed where borders are concerned on the ground. But who's going to pay for the totally abhorrent mess that Russia has created in Ukraine? And how about all those who've been killed and wounded in this conflict? Then there's the matter of how this neutrality will be policed. Do you not think Russia will need a Putin puppet government in Kyiv to do his bidding? Then there's the canal from the Dnieper River to the Crimea that now once again carries fresh water to Crimea. How will the Russians ensure that this is never dammed up again unless they have people there to ensure that it doesn't happen? In 2014, when Russia took Crimea, the Ukrainian government blocked the canal and Crimea was under strict water rationing and had failing crops as a result. This was costing Moscow a fortune to deal with. And one of the first actions by Russian forces invading Ukraine from Crimea was to dismantle that dam. Anyway... Another unwritten demand will no doubt be that Zelensky and his main supporters are at least exiled for life. And do we really believe that Putin would then just sit back after all of this? Really? Personally, I think the Russian terms would amount to total surrender. But after claiming to have liberated the city of Chuhuyev, from Russian forces, taken back control of the regional airport in the southern Ukraine region of Mykolyiv, as well as destroying 30 Russian helicopters over the weekend, the Ukrainians might not be too willing to give up the fight just yet. And the New York Times is reporting that the West is engaged in a huge supply of weapons to Ukraine programme reminiscent of the food supplies given during the Cold War Berlin airlift in 1948-49. But this time the flights are arriving at the NATO side of the Ukraine border and are then transported by road to their destination. In less than a week, says the report, the United States and NATO have pushed more than 17,000 anti-tank weapons, including Javelin missiles, over the borders of Poland and Romania, unloading them from giant military cargo planes so they can make the trip by land to Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital and other major cities. But how much longer can the Ukrainians hold out?